Shalom. Welcome to the Shepherd's Light Online Church. Before the service starts, we wanted to invite you to join our chat. The chat is where you can ask questions, share verses, and connect with other viewers from around the world. Just write your first comment and choose the nickname to join. If you need prayer, click the live prayer icon and you'll be taken to a private chat where one of our team members will pray with you. The service is about to start. Don't forget to sign up so you can keep your username and profile. God bless you and enjoy the message.
Shalom Nashimi Kot. Nanishma. Hello, sweet women. How are you? I am so excited to be here with you. And I really hope that you're learning and being as encouraged as I am with what the Lord's showing us through His Word. Don't you love how He does that? He's so, so good to us. So, I'm praying that you all are doing good and that you had a great, great week. And um, last week, we finished up Hebrews 11, which I've heard called the heroes of faith, just because they stepped out in faith, doing what God was calling them to do, even when it seemed scary and impossible. But you and I both know the Lord is so faithful. He always comes through. So all we need is faith. Emuna, emuna, faith. So if you were here last week, um, I mentioned that I hoped you were as encouraged as I was as we talked about Gideon and Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, David, um, Samuel, Shmulek, and all the other prophets. And so much we can learn from their life. And don't you love the fact that they're human, just like you and I. They go through times of being fearful, times of being sad, times of um, not doing what God told them to do. But then they would turn their eyes on the Lord, they would ask Him to forgive them, and they would step out in faith, emunah. And that's what you and I need to do. So, get cozy in your chair, get comfortable, get something to drink, whether it's hom, or car, hot or cold. And um, let's see what the Lord has for us this day. Turn to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, and it says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up, and let us run with endurance the race that God has set before us. You know, we know that the people that we've been studying about, these heroes of faith, they can't see us right now. Can? Right? In Revelation 21, verse 14, it says, He, God, will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there will be no more death, or sorrow, or crying, or pain. All these things are gone forever. Oh, heaven's going to be so wonderful. But if you think about it, if when we're in heaven with God, then he's going to wipe away our tears and we'll never be sorrowful or never cry again or have pain, then I don't think that we can see what's going on in earth especially with our loved ones, because that would many times make us sorrowful, right? And so they probably can't see us until we get to heaven and are with them. I mean, no one knows for sure, but it does make you wonder. And, um, you know, so think about the people we've been studying and so many others that are going through major, major trials, right? There's so many, whether it's sickness or whether it's money or whether it's persecution because they've given their life to the Lord. You know, and like we talked about last week, we touched on the fact that there's people right now in countries that are being tortured and are being told, all you have to do is deny Yeshua, deny Jesus, and then we will quit torturing you. We'll let you live. Or they threaten to kill the person, the believer's family. 
oh, how hard is that? And remember we talked about last week, we need to keep them in prayer. But it also should encourage you and me to keep our eyes on the Lord, to persevere, to keep running that race that God has set before us. Because remember it says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He's with us. He'll give us that whatever we need when we need it. You know? So in that sense, we are surrounded by a huge crowd of witnesses. Because we remember the ones we've been studying about and what they did as far as stepping out in faith. Emunah, they had faith, and the ones that are going through it now, and in many ways, you and I, you know, with our struggles of just everyday life, we need that faith, and we need our eyes on the Lord. So in that sense, it does encourage us, and it does encourage us to keep running this race. But just for this example of what we just read in um, Hebrews 12 as far as being surrounded by a crowd of witnesses. I mean, doesn't that make you think of a sports event? And I started thinking, let's pretend for a moment that the ones that we've been studying are physically here and can see us and can cheer us on. And so picture being in a marathon race and let's pretend for example in february in tel aviv was a huge marathon and they ran not me but the runners ran 42 kilometers which is about 26 miles now this is definitely a pretend scenario because if i ran even half of a block, I'd probably die of a heart attack. <laughs> I have just, even when I was little, I never liked running. And so, but this is all pretend. So, pretend that all the people that we've been studying about are sitting in the arena and they're watching you about to run this huge race and we're in Tel Aviv. And I remember watching them at different times because they have it throughout the years. Next year is in Jerusalem, Jerusalem. But this year and in past years, it's been in Tel Aviv. And part of it's running along the beach. So if I had to run, I would want that. But anyway, so pretend you're running with everything you have. You're running this race. And there's all these clouds of witnesses these people watching you. And Deborah and Barak, they're jumping up and down, cheering for you. You can do it. You can do it. Keep running. Um, David and Shmulek, David and Samuel, they are so excited that they're giving high fives to each other. And because they're so excited that you're running this race with your eyes on God, but you know, you keep on running. And Gideon and Jephthah, they notice that suddenly you're getting tired. I mean, this is a long, long race. And you're beginning to get tired. And so they're yelling at you, hey, keep your eyes on the goal, on the end goal. And what you and I before have called the eternal um, spirit, you know, the eternal goal. Keep your eyes on that goal and keep running this race and just keep plodding along. And so all these heroes of faith are cheering you on. But as you're running, now remember we're pretending, as you're running, you suddenly notice you're running a little faster and so you're getting near the person that's in front of you. And you notice like, hey, I know her. She goes to my congregation. I don't really talk to her. I don't really care for her, even though I've never really talked to her. She just doesn't seem like someone I'd want to talk to. And oh my, look at what she's running in. She has short shorts. She has a halter top that's really low 
Oh my goodness, can you believe she's dressed like that? I can't believe it. I cannot wait to see my best friend and let her know. Okay, so as you're running this race, those thoughts about this person in front of you suddenly comes in your mind. And you can't wait to tell your best friend. But then, just like the Holy Spirit, God always does, he'll remind you that what you're doing is not right. And he's telling you, hey, that would be gossip if you told your friend and made fun of this girl. And, you know, it would be gossip. But, I don't know. I really wanted to tell my friend about it. She and I could have a good laugh about it. But then the verse, Psalm or Proverbs 16, verse 28, suddenly goes through your mind. And it says, A troublemaker plants seeds of strife. Gossip separates the best of friends. Hmm. So, not only would I be sinning because I would be gossiping, but I would also make my friend sin because she would be listening to me even if she ended up not saying anything. And then that would be an uncomfortable thing between the two of us, and eventually it could hurt our friendship. So now, at this point, you have a choice. Or if it was me, I would have a choice. I can follow through gossiping about this lady and how she's dressed with my best friend. Or... I can right now, as I'm running this race, tell the Lord I'm sorry for even wanting to gossip and ask him to help me and ask me to start praying for this gal instead of gossiping about her. So what am I going to do, you know? And suddenly I remember times when the people we've been studying have sinned and the consequences that they went through because of their sin. And I also remember that when they turned to the Lord, asked the Lord to forgive them, and kept their eyes on the Lord and stepped out in faith, emunah, that God used them mightily for his glory, right? And so at the same time, you would think it was an easy choice, but you know it's not. I mean, I really, really wanted to tell my friend about this gal and how she's dressed. And at the same time, I want to be obedient to what God wants. So think about the last part of Hebrews 12.1 that we read earlier. It says, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. I mean, think about how easy it is. I'm running on the race and suddenly I see something or I hear something and I'm tempted to sin as I'm still walking with the Lord, those temptations come. But you know what? God promises that he will help us and give us a way out during those temptations. And it reminded me of Psalm 139, verse 13 through 18. And I know we've shared this before. It's one of my favorite passages. But it's talking to God. So picture you talking to God. And it said, you made all the delicate inner parts of my body. You knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. You watched me as I was be being formed in utter seclusion, as I was woven together in the dark of the womb. Verse 16, you saw me before I was even born, 
every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. How precious are your thoughts about me, O oh God. They can't be numbered. I can't even count them. They outnumber the grains of sand. And when I wake up, you are still with me. Isn't that the most beautiful, beautiful passage? And so that means that the Lord has a plan for my life, has a plan for your life. And we know from Jeremiah 29, verse 11, it says, God's saying to you, to me, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They're plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. So your plan, God, is good for me. And whatever you laid out for me, whatever path you want me to take, this path called life, I need to run this race victoriously. You need to run the race God's given you victoriously. But the Lord knows it's not easy that we so easily get tangled in sin. So how do we run this race victoriously? And I love how all answers God's given us in his word. So if we continue in Hebrews 12 and look at verse 2 through 4, it says, We do this, we run the race victoriously, we do this by keeping our eyes on Yeshua, on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because, key, because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now, Akshav, now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. Verse 3, think of all the hostility he endured from sinful people. Then you won't become weary and give up. After all, you have not given your life in your struggles against sin. Wow. So think about everything Yeshua, Jesus, went through for you and for me, all because he loved us so, so much. And he loves us so, so much. And I'll never even go through a tiny bit of pain that he went through. I mean, sometimes the pain is horrible. But we have the assurance that he's with us, walking us through it. And never, ever will come anywhere close to what he went through for us. And he was willing, willing to die in our place. Remember Romans 3, verse 23 through 24 describes it. It says, for everyone has sinned, you and I have sinned, we all fall short of the glory of God's glorious standard. And remember, other verses say the penalty of sin is death. But in verse 24, it says, Yet God, in his grace, freely makes us right in his sight. He did this through Christ Yeshua, Jesus, when he freed us from the penalty of our sins. He freed us from the penalty of my sins. He freed you from the penalty of your sin. So if you've given your life to the Lord, then you're saved. You're free from that penalty of sin, which is death. And when you die, you will immediately go to heaven and live forever, eternally with the Lord. And while you're here on earth, he goes through everything with you. And you know what? Maybe you've never given your life to the Lord. Maybe you don't know this freedom from sin. 
You don't know your Savior that died in your place. And if that's you, don't put it off. Tomorrow's, you know, promise to no man, the Bible says. And so right now, give your life to the Lord. Call out to him. Tell him you're sorry for your sins. Ask him to come in and live in your life and lead you and guide you and have that assurance that he's with you at all times. And he says in his word that he will never ever leave you nor forsake you. He's not going to abandon you. He loves you so much. If you were the only person in the whole world to give your life to him, he would have gone through that suffering and died just for you. He loves you that much. So, if you've done that, if you've given your life to the Lord, we would love to share with you and rejoice with you. So let us know. We'd also love just to pray with you. And if you need a Bible of whatever language, you know, is your first language that's the most comfortable to read, let us know and we'll get it to you. So, I love that he's done that for us. And, you know, to trust him enough to know he wants the best for me. To trust him enough to know he wants the best for you. And so we want to keep his word. We want to do what he wants, right? And so knowing this, I can run this race of life victoriously. You can run the race that God set before you victoriously. Year by year, day by day, moment by moment, second by second, right? And sometimes it's hard, but we can do it because the Lord is with us. And we have that eternal vision, knowing that when we get to heaven, it will be perfect for the rest of our lives. And so, you know, you, the next question then, going through all this, is... How can I run this race victoriously? You know, how, what if I blow it with sin? Because we're sinful people. What do I do? How can I keep running this race? And once again, the Bible tells us numerous places, but since we're studying Hebrews 12, if you look at verse 5 through 11, it says the answer. It says, and have you forgotten the encouraging words God spoke to you as his children? So say, I've been walking with him, I've been running this race, but now I've gotten into sin. What do I do? And what if I'm not acknowledging my sin yet? You know, I want to keep sinning. I want to keep doing what I'm doing. It's still fun. I know in the future it won't be, and there's consequences, but right now it feels like fun. What do I do? So it says, he said, God said, my children don't make light of the Lord's discipline and don't give up when he corrects you. For the Lord disciplines those he loves and he punishes each one he accepts as his child. As you endure the divine discipline, remember that God is treating you as his own child. Who has ever heard of a child who's not disciplined by his father? If God doesn't discipline you as he does all of his children, it means that you're illegitimate and you're not really his child at all. Verse 9, since we respected our earthly fathers who disciplined us, shouldn't we submit even more to the discipline of the Father of our spirits and who lives forever? Verse 10, for our earthly fathers disciplined us for a few years, doing the best they knew how to. But, but of all, God's discipline is always good for us. Tov meod. It's good for us. So that we might share 
in his holiness, in his holiness. No discipline is enjoyable while it's happening. It's painful, right, Ken? It's painful. But afterwards, evolve, but afterwards, there will be a peaceful harvest of right living for those who are trained in this way. Verse 12, so take a new grip with your tired hands and strengthen your weak knees. Mark out a straight path for your feet. I like that. So that those who are weak and lame will not fall, but become strong. Isn't that just so perfect? Everything they said, it's so easy to understand. You know, none of us like to be punished for our sins. But at the same time, doesn't it comfort you to know that, oh, I'm being punished because I'm a child of God and I did something wrong and my father is teaching me and he's teaching me a hard lesson and it's not fun, but I will remember to not do it again because I don't want to be punished again. And, you know, it makes me think about the people we've been studying and their lives, you know? Think about David, David and Bathsheba. Bathsheba. I mean, God punished David by taking away his son. And that's harsh. But I love what David said to the people that were around him. He voiced to the people around him. He said, one day I will see my son again. He knew that his son was in heaven with God, his father. He knew that. And he knew that one day he would be with him. And I mean, he cried, he wept, he begged God to not do that. But God in his wisdom knew that that's the lesson David needed. And you know, so many times, and I've mentioned this before, and I'm sure you've heard it too, people say, well, my sin isn't hurting anybody. My actions aren't hurting anybody else. But remember what David wrote to God. He wrote this to God after he had the affair with Bathsheba and after he killed her husband, Uriah. In Psalm 51, verse 4, David said to God, Against you and you alone have I sinned. I have done what is evil in your sight. You will be proved right in what you say, and your judgment against me is just. You know, it's important to remember that when we sin, we also sin against God because we're doing what God tells us not to do, right? And just like a child, when a child does something that his parents have told him not to, and maybe it doesn't have anything to do with his parents, you know, he hit another child or something, but his parents had told him not to, so it's also a big sin against his parents. And if we're doing something that God tells us not to, and first of all, he only tells us not to because it's a, for our own good. But if we're doing it anyway, then we're sinning against God. And that's pretty scary if you think about it that way. Um, and the other thing that I love is, like the verse said, you know, our Heavenly Father or Mother, you know, our Heavenly Parents, they punished us as best as they knew how, right? I mean, I can remember, oh, when my kids, when they were little, I would spank them, but when they got bigger, then I would ground them. And so for my youngest, Tara, that was easy. She loved watching TV. So if I grounded her by saying, you can't have TV for the next week, it would devastate her. You would think I was killing her, right? 
But for my older daughter, Christy, I really struggled with what she really loved to take away from. And so I would tell her she couldn't, um, you know, spend the night at her friend's house or her friend couldn't come over. And she was like, okay. I mean, she loved being with her friends, but she was okay with that. She liked being by herself also. And so I would tell her, no TV. She never cared that much for TV, so that didn't work. And I remember Stephen and I praying and talking, what will work? You know, I told her, okay, you can't be on the phone for a week. And she's like, okay. And even today, she still doesn't like talking to people on the phone. And so that didn't work. Finally, and it was totally God showed us, we told her she couldn't listen to the radio for a week, and that was it. You would have thought that we killed her, because she loves music, and she loved listening to the music. And suddenly we're telling her she can't have it. So that was what worked for her. But what I love is our Heavenly Father knows what works best for each of us. He knows what will hurt enough that will stop that sin that we're doing. And he doesn't do it to be mean. He does it because he loves us. And he knows what will stop us in our track from that sin and be truly repentant and truly change our ways. Right? And don't you love that? And don't you love... Hebrews 12, verse 11, that we read, when it says, no discipline is enjoyable while it's happening, right? <laughs> it's painful. I love the wording to this. But of all, afterwards, and listen to this part, there will be a peaceful harvest of right living for those who are trained this way. And don't you love that? And wouldn't you love to be able to say, well, I'm not going to sin because I love God and I don't want to hurt him. And I know we all feel that way. But then Satan gets there and entices us with that temptation. And so not only do we not do something wrong for that reason, but when we're punished and it hurts, it's a memory that, ah, oh, I don't want that to happen again, so I'm not going to do it, right? And so we need to make sure we have a teachable spirit and that we're the women that God created us to be, that we're on the path that God desired when we were in our mother's womb for us to follow. And we need to, to do that, we need to stand fast in the Lord. Right? We need to stand fast in Him. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58 says, Be steadfast, immovable, immovable. Right? We're not going to get off this path. Immovable. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. And you know what? It doesn't say if your life isn't crazy at this point, or if the world isn't crazy at this point, you know? No. God's word warns us how bad the world's going to be and that it's going to continue getting worse the closer he comes. And you can tell that's happening. But we don't allow the circumstances that's happening around us to scare us, or depress us. I mean, every single day there's something that can scare us, depress us, worry about, anxiety, and the Bible is very specific. It says, don't worry, don't be anxious. God's got it, right? And so that means when we're that way, we're in sin. And we need the Lord's help to do this. And the only way we can do is by keeping our eyes on Him. I love 2 Chronicles verse 20, verse, I mean chapter 20, verse 17. 
And it says, you will not need to fight in the battle. God's telling the Israelites this. But he's also telling you and me, you will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourself, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, who is with you. I love that part. That's key. The Lord who is with you. O Judah and Jerusalem, do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, keep running the race, for the Lord is with you. Isn't that the most comforting thing to know and to think about? We just need to keep our eyes on the Lord regardless, regardless of what we're going through, regardless of the craziness around us. And there's a lot of things going on in our world right now, right? And remember, and this is key, remember that, think about a friend that you're close to. How did you get to be friends? How did you get to know that person? It was by spending time with them. It was by, you know, talking to them listening to them, right? And that's what God desires for us. He desires for you and me to spend time with him every day, whether it's a little bit of time or a lot of time. He knows our schedule. He knows your schedule. But read the Bible and don't just read it to be reading it. You know, sometimes I only have time to read a couple of verses. Or if I have the whole passage, then think about it off and on during the day. Ask the Lord to help you apply what you read to your life. And this is why I love the one-year Bible, because it gives a little bit of the Tanakh, Old Testament, the Habrit Hadashah, the New Testament, a psalm and a proverb. And um, you go through the whole Bible in a year. And I love that. Other times the Lord has me just take a book and really study it and everything. And like I said, sometimes I only have time to read a couple of verses. But think about it. Talk to the Lord about it. Spend time with the Lord every day talking to him. At times where you just sit still, where it says, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Watch how he takes care of your situation. But throughout the day, where Paul says praying continually, and what he means by that is all through your day, he's your best friend. He's there. And thankfully, he can read your mind. He can read your thoughts. And so, you know, as I go through the day, I'm like, wow, oh, Lord, thank you for that beautiful flower that is outside growing? Or, Lord, could you help me um, figure out how to do this? Or what to say to this person? You know, just talk to him all day long. But also have time where you just stop, even if it's only for five minutes, where it's just you and him, and you're pouring out your heart to him, you're thanking him, you're praying for your needs and for others. And then you stop and you listen. Because we've talked before. If your friend, if you saw your friend and you're like talking, 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 and then they're about to say something and you're like, okay, well, nice talking to you. Bye. And you never allow them to talk to you. And what happens is when you're still before the Lord, it allows him to talk to the quietness of your heart, to calm your fears, to give you his peace that passes all understanding. And it gives you a chance to just be enveloped in his love. And don't we all need that? So, I just love that. So let's keep each other in prayer all week. Let's pray that we all 
run this race victoriously, that we keep our eyes on the Lord, and that we draw close, because it says, draw close to the Lord, and he will draw close to you. And that's what his desire is, and that's what we all need, right? We're going to spend eternity with him. We need his, his friendship and his help while we're on earth also. So, hopefully, you can stay around and chat. I love being able to do that and getting to know you and being able to share prayer requests or praises. It's such a blessing. And so do that, please. And hopefully we can meet together on Yom Shishi on Friday um, to hear the teaching with Pastor Stephen. So I'm so thankful we can do this each week. God bless you. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, your perfect love is casting out fear. And even when I'm caught in the middle of the storms of this life, I won't turn back, I know you are near. And I will fear no is coming for the heart that holds on a glorious light beyond all compare and there will be an end to these troubles but until that day comes we'll live to know you're here on the earth and I will fear no I can see a light.